Hey guys, so I'm out here cleaning up some trash in an area that I like to explore quite a bit and I've found several of these beer bottles. Now the sad reality is that there's not many places that you can go explore and play in the woods where you're not going to find stuff like this. So I'm going to show you a really quick easy way to help clean up your environment and to hone in and improve your skills at the same time. So stay tuned, hopefully you guys will enjoy. Okay, so I'm gonna start by filling this thing up about halfway with water. So once we have this about halfway full of water, I'm gonna kind of cup it with my hand and I'm gonna hit it with my other hand and blow the bottom off this thing. So I'm gonna let a little bit of water out because it's pretty full. So done correctly, I should have a fairly intact bottom and it should break pretty clean. So I'm gonna pick up any trash that came loose and now I'm gonna show you how to make an arrowhead out of this. Okay, so there's only a couple things we need to get started. One is our beer bottle. We're gonna need some type of leather or buckskin uh, that we can use as a leg pad. And as a hand pad, we're gonna need some type of rock, a hard rock. This is just a river rock, quartzite type material. And we're gonna need a deer antler, okay? Now you could, instead of a deer antler, you could use a piece of wood with a small piece of copper um, inserted in the end. But deer antlers is something you can find out in the woods. You can find some sheds. This is from a little spike that I killed a few years ago. Okay, so this is stuff that you might have access to out in the woods, hopefully. And the last thing we're gonna need is to either be set up somewhere indoors where we can sweep up the, the trash, the debris we're gonna leave on the floor, or I wanna have some type of tarp under me if I'm outside, okay? So I have a tarp, and we're ready to get started. Okay, so I wanna start by getting rid of any of that kind of curvature that's left on there from the bottle. So I'm gonna take my hammer stone and I hold this like so with that stuff kind of facing down. And I'm just gonna take that rock and go around the edge and I'm just barely brushing the edge, okay? So I'm not hitting up here, I'm just barely brushing the edge of that with my rock brushing downward, okay? So a little downward strokes with my hammer stone. And you can see that's gonna come off fairly quickly. that debris and what we're actually doing is setting up a platform all the way around the edge of this thing that I'm going to use to send flakes off of. So at this point I'm going to take my little hand pad and we're going to be using pressure flaking for almost all of this. Okay so this is a great way to learn how to pressure flake a little better um, and really hone in on that skill. And then you can take flakes of different materials and make arrowheads really easily, okay? So we're gonna learn to pressure flake and we're gonna learn how to get rid of the curvature. So we have a curvature in this thing. Okay, you have a convex and a concave side. So we're gonna get rid of the curvature, learn how to straighten that out, flatten it out, make it into shape and make an arrowhead. Okay, so I'm gonna take my antler. I'm gonna have the convex side facing up. I want to start removing flakes off this concave side. It's gonna feel really good to knock flakes off the other way, because those flakes are gonna travel really nicely across that convex side, okay? But I want to start removing material from the concave side 
to help flatten that out and bring the center line up and flatten out this whole piece. So we're gonna start with the concave side. I'm just gonna work all the way around the edge. Okay, so with this pressure flaker, I'm pushing in on the edge, inward really hard and then popping down and that's gonna release the flake. Okay, so you'll push in and pop down. And these flakes won't travel as far at first, okay, until we get this thing convex on both sides. So I'm gonna work all the way around the edge, pushing in, popping down. My pad's in the way where you can't see it. So pushing in and popping down. Taking these little tiny flakes off. This is a really old beer bottle, so it's pretty brittle. Some of it's chipping away on me where I don't want it to. I'm just gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so sometimes when these bottles break, you break off a piece like this you get left with what's called a square edge okay so you have this 90 degree edge and that's not what we want to flake with because if I flake inward on that 90 degree edge this flake's gonna go in and it's gonna dive down and leave a deep it's called a hinge you can see one right there okay so I'm gonna show you how to get past those square edges I want to start at one side of my square edge and I'm going to flake downward, okay? And all that's doing is knocking off a piece of material and creating a, a platform on the bottom side. So when I flip that over, now that piece I just flaked off, I have a platform there so I can knock another piece off and I'm going to use that to zigzag my way all the way across here. Okay, so here's my square edge. If I start on one side, you can see where a flake's been removed right there from the piece I took off. I can use that as my platform. So I'm gonna push down. Right there, that removes a piece of material on the bottom side, that little dip right there. So if I flip that over, now I can use that as my platform. I'll be going the opposite way since I flipped it over. And all I'm doing is using those platforms that are created by the material that's removed to zigzag across that square edge. So I'll knock a flake off, flip it over, use the piece that was just removed, the platform, and work all the way across. Okay, so where I used to have a square edge I now have a series of valleys and mountains. Okay, you can see it looks like a zigzag. So now, these are all platforms I can wor work off of. So in this case, since I have this curvature, this concavity on the bottom, I want to only work on the bottom side for now and try to flatten that piece out. So I'm gonna go back to all the low points here, all the little dips, and I'm gonna flake right on those, using those as my platforms. And sometimes I'll use my antler just to kind of brush this. All I'm doing is abrading it a little bit, creating 
a little stronger edge so I can knock a flake off across there without crushing that really thin edge. So I'll flake just this side, all the low points. And start removing material off that concave side. Okay, and I'm gonna keep doing the same all the way around until I've worked all the way around the edge of this. And it looks like this. And my center line will start moving away from the concave side towards the convex side as I'm removing material. Okay, so if I'm knocking flakes off from this bottom side, that material is disappearing on the bottom and that center line is coming up. Okay, so I'll keep doing that all the way around. If I run into another piece that breaks off, creates a square edge. Okay, square edge right here. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm just gonna zigzag through that. So knock a flake off, turn it over, use the little valley left by the flake that was removed as my platform, and keep doing the same thing all the way across that square edge. Now that square edge is removed. So I'm just gonna keep working my way all the way around there. And once I've removed flakes from the bottom side around the whole thing, I'm gonna take my rock and I'm just gonna brush and abrade this whole edge all the way around. Okay, and what that abrading does is gets rid of that really thin edge I just created by flaking it, makes it a little stronger, and then it allows me to send flakes okay. further across. So if you it. imagine that this is my edge, if I were to hit this with my hand, it's gonna break my fingers, right? They're really thin compared to the rest of my arm. It'll break my fingers, crush it, okay? And that's where the energy is going. Okay, the fingers are crushed, they're broken, and that's it. But if I were to take something and abrade that down, stiffen it up and make it thicker, now if I hit that, that energy is going to pass through my arm and send the energy through, okay? So I'm doing the same thing, knocking flakes off of here. If I abrade that down, instead of crushing the edge and all that energy just dissipating, it's going to allow me to send that energy across the face of this piece of glass, okay? So these are places where the edge was crushed and the flakes didn't travel. Okay, and this is where the flakes did travel. So they're not gonna travel very far at first across this concave side. But once we start to flatten this out and get rid of that curvature, they'll travel a lot further. So I've gone around, abraded all of that. I'm gonna do another pass on the concave side, and I'm gonna keep working only that concave side until it starts to flatten out. Okay, once it starts to flatten out, and we start getting a flatter piece of glass here, then we can start changing it up. But for now, I wanna keep working that side because it's gonna to start to transition from concave to creating a little bit of a convex piece from the edge across. Okay, and once we get there, then we can really remove some flakes and we can make a nice looking point. And it's also gonna flatten this out so we don't have a curved point. 
Okay, we don't want a curved point that's going to be shooting around trees, right? We want a, a nice, flat, straight flying arrowhead. And honestly, you know, that's a joke, but the curvature of that arrowhead isn't going to change the flight of the arrow so much. But once it hits the animal, if that energy isn't going directly inward, if we have some kind of curvature, okay, that energy isn't going to go the way we want it to. So we want to have all of our energy in line. So when it hits that animal, it's going straight into it. Okay, not deflecting energy elsewhere. So I'm removing a flake and then I'll go right next to it. And just keep flaking across there. So at the same time I'm doing this, I'm also starting to picture an arrowhead, okay? So you can see it's starting to take a little bit of a triangular shape. So I'm going to I'm going to follow that. This will be my back. This will be the point of the arrowhead. So I'm going to keep kind of following that. So the same time that I'm trying to straighten this out and send flakes across it, I'm also imagining in my head how this point's going to look. So I'm doing two things at once. I'm shape, shaping it by removing the material Okay, I'm shaping it this way, but I'm also shaping it this way, trying to flatten it out. This is a pretty old bottle. It's been sitting out in these woods for a long time. It's a little bit brittle. Sometimes you'll, you'll have a piece break the way you don't want it to. If that happens and you get that square edge, you just do the same thing. You zigzag through it again. I'm just going to keep working my way around this. So periodically... Instead of taking that rock and abrading, I'll just use my antler at the point that I'm going to flake. And I'll just kind of rub that antler on there. And I'm getting rid of that really sharp edge. And then I can knock a nice flake off. So we'll keep doing that, shaping this into a triangle, flattening that out. I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. And we'll come back. Okay, so I flaked around this a few times. You can see it's getting more triangular. The flakes are starting to travel further on this concave side. And you can still see I've hardly touched the convex side. Okay, actually I haven't touched it really at all. So, but as I keep working across here on each edge, the center line is gonna get closer to the other face. So I'm trying to hold this phone still. Get it to focus. Wow, it's really hard to focus on this thing. Okay, but that center line, which means the edge that I'm working off of, I think will not focus, is getting closer to this con vex side. So when that happens, I need to get that center line back closer to the side that I'm flaking. Because if you imagine, I'm putting pressure here and pushing in. 
Okay, all that energy should be going across this face. Okay, but as that center line raises, my angle that I'm pushing in at raises as well. So now I'm pushing more downward. So I'll get little flakes coming downward rather than across this face. So I want this line that I'm flaking from to be closer to the face that I'm removing, removing the flakes. Okay, so I want that center line to be further down. Okay, so to do that, I remove material from the side that it's closer to. It's almost like thinking backwards. So now I'm gonna flip this up, the concave side facing me, and I'm gonna use this antler just as a scruncher, okay? I'm not gonna try to remove big flakes. I'm just gonna kinda use the edge of this antler on the edge of this center line, and I'm just gonna kinda rotate that down across the edge. So I'm pushing straight down. I'm not trying to remove flakes across that face. I'm just pushing straight into the pad, straight down in this direction. And all that's doing is bringing that center line back towards my concave side. So I can work another round of flakes off the concave side and start to straighten that out a little more. Okay, because once I get ready to, these flakes are gonna travel across this convex side really easily. Okay, but I have to get this thing straightened out. So now, by doing that, that has brought my center line closer to the face I wanna remove flakes. You can see I've set up what's called a continuous platform across there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna have the concave side facing me and I'm gonna scrunch with the antler, just kind of brushing the edge, scrunching downward. And dump all those flakes off. Now that center line is much closer to this face now. And these are platforms that I can work off of. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the back end. And while I'm doing this, I'm also shaping it. It's coming into more of a, a triangular form. So I've scrunched that. <clears throat> I'm just gonna gently abrade it a little bit, my rock. And now I'm gonna go one more round on each face. Knock a flake off, go next to it, knock a flake off. And I'm pushing inward and then popping down. At this point, it's a lot of redundancy. I'll keep doing that all the way around and then we'll come back and re-examine. Okay, so I'm starting to get flakes all the way across this concave side, convex side, still mostly untouched. It's starting to look like an arrowhead, but we still have a lot of curvature this way. So what I'm gonna do next, to try to get rid of that, is I'm gonna start removing material, removing flakes from the high part of this top across the top side. That'll bring that center line down, and then removing flakes from the bottom side of these two low points, okay? So by doing that, Try to get out of the sun, get this thing to focus a little bit more. Okay, by doing that, I'm moving that center line down at the high point, moving the center line up at the low points, and I should be able to bring all that kind of 
into one level playing field. Okay, so I'll have my center line closer to this face on the in the middle, closer to these faces on the tips. Start moving material downward here. Flip it over and remove material from the low points. Okay, so I'm gonna remove material from the low points this direction, flip it over from the low points the other direction. I'm gonna keep doing that until it kind of comes into a straight line. So I'm braiding this middle part downward a little bit. Now I'm gonna have the concave side facing up. I'm gonna go to that middle where the low part is and start flaking across. And these flakes should travel really well because we have a con vex side on the top. So those flakes should travel honestly all the way across. So I wanna be careful not to push too hard because what'll happen is it'll, it'll travel all the way across and then break off the other side and you can lose a lot of width. So I'm not gonna push inward quite as hard But I also don't want to just crush that edge. So I'm still abrading my antler. And that's actually a good example. It traveled across, broke off right there. And that'll give you a square edge if you're not careful. This thing will not focus. This camera is just not wanting to focus on this arrowhead. You can see it kind of traveled across, broke off on that other side. And guys, I apologize for the lack of focus from this camera. This is my iPhone camera. And for some reason, it does not like to focus on this arrowhead. I understand that makes it hard for you guys to see what I'm talking about as far as the center lines. You can see I'm removing material from the top. I removed it all the way from the top on the, the middle, that high point. Now I'm gonna transition and keep working the bottom side of these low points. We broke off corner there but that's all right that'll actually help us get rid of that curvature more because we'll just straighten out flatten out that bottom side and that'll honestly get rid of most of our curvature yeah so now I'm gonna work in from the bottom pushing inward and downward Trying to flatten that out. Not to zigzag into the square edge I created when that broke. So I'm using that same technique. Removing a flake, flipping it over. Get rid of that square edge. Okay, if my center line gets too close to this top side when I'm trying to remove material from the bottom side, I can scrunch my antler. Just like we did a minute ago. And that's bringing that center line back towards the bottom. Just remo removing material from the top side, brings that center line down. 
remember we're kind of thinking backwards you can see this is starting to flatten out so I'll scrunch that I braid a little bit send one more series of flakes off this back side I want to hear a nice clean pop when I do that. If it's just crumbling, then I'm not getting good flakes. So it should make a nice popping sound. Okay, so I'm going to keep working this into a triangle. I have this little more corner here. I'm going to bring that in, bring this more into a point. And just by working that middle on the convex side, we've got most of that material all the way across. So at this point, we've flattened it out for the most part. And we're ready to bring this into a triangular point and start to finish it. Okay, so now I'm going to focus more on trying to streamline this, make a nice triangle. So I want to get my center line centered up anywhere where it's closer to one face. I want to re remove material from that side and really start to center that center line up like it should be. I'll stop periodically <clears throat> and look at my triangle and see what I need to do to make it more triangular. And for that, I can lay it down on my lap to where I can get a nice overhead view of it. And I'll start shaping that up a little better. Make sure that point is kind of centered in the middle. And if not, I'll figure out what I need to do to get it there. Read that. So at this point, 
I broke the tip off a little bit, but at this point, my center line is closer here. I scrunched that so it's pretty, the, the edges aren't insanely sharp. So I'm gonna send one more series of flakes off each side and that'll bring that center line into alignment, get us to a nice sharp point on the end and we'll be ready to notch this thing. So I'll start one side and just knock flakes. all the way down this side, going right next to the flake I'm removing, going right next to that, knocking off another flake. I'll kind of abrade a little bit. The closer I get to the tip, the more careful I'm gonna be not to use a crazy amount of inward pressure. So as I get close to the tip, I'll, I'll start kind of brushing down a little more so I don't send a flake all the way across there and, break that tip off or break the other side off. Same thing on the other side. I'll start kind of at the base. Working my way to the tip. I'm kind of changing the amount of pressure I'm putting inward. And towards the tip, I'm almost just barely brushing down. Just sharpening that up. Bring it into a tip, to a nice point. We've straightened that out where it's nice and straight now. Both sides are completely flaked. And now we're ready to notch it. So I broke the ears off of it. It's not so much corner notch anymore, but a little stem point. Uh, far from perfect, but it's nice and flat. We got rid of that curvature. Nice sharp hunting point. And this will kill anything in North America. <clears throat> so it's a great way to get out, clean up the environment a little bit, uh, pick up some beer bottles, and this is a really transferable skill because you can take any flake of material, a uh, piece of flint, take that flake. This will show you how to get rid of the curvature and bring that into alignment and get nice, flat, straight flying arrowheads. <clears throat> so really transferable skill. You clean up the environment, you get free material, and you get to hone in on your skills a little bit. So get out, pick up some beer bottles, and enjoy. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And you can show your friends a little party trick, if nothing else. Thanks, guys.